So we're now on to the final stage of this three-stage process of the industrial production of glucose and fructose from starch. If you remember, we split the starch using alpha amylase to produce oligosaccharides. Then we used the glucoamylase to split the oligosaccharides into glucose. But if you remember, there was something special about the glucose. It looks like this. It's a ring structure. And this time, again, we're going to add an enzyme, a biological catalyst. This time we're going to add glucose isomerase. And you may be able to guess what this does. You know, an isomer is a structurally different molecule with the same amount of carbons, oxygens and hydrogens. So an isomerase is an enzyme, again, that catalyzes the production of isomers. And in this case, the glucose isomerase produces an isomer of glucose known as fructose. And here again, you can see it's got a ring structure, the oxygen with a bond to one carbon and a bond to another. And this time on the ring, we have two arms, one here and one here. It's got the same formula, C6, H12, H6, but it's an isomer of glucose. So, that was the final stage in the industrial production of glucose and fructose from starch. You may be wondering at this stage why they go to all this trouble. The main reason is that when they use fructose, it's much sweeter than glucose and sweeter than sucrose and this means that they can use less of this when they're sweetening soft drinks or when they're adding it to cakes or biscuits or whatever um, so it reduces the cost basically even though they have to go through this industrial production process. Remember one of the main reasons it starts from a very cheap raw material, the corn, which is heavily subsidized. So that was the final stage of this three-stage process of producing glucose and fructose from starch.